Hello to this Beckhoff webinar for Analog I.O. My name is Martin Potroschek. I'm product manager in Beckhoff Automation here and I'm working with Isacat I.O. and especially with the Analog one of this. Today we will have here our second webinar. In the first Analog I.O. webinar we have seen a lot about the different analog devices from Beckhoff and how to select the right one. And, in, and then we started a small TwinCut application in the last webinar. And now in this second webinar, we will um, finish this way and we will um, yeah, make a compl complete application of this analog device. And in the end, we will see how to work with the scope um, view of TwinCut. Um, to show this, I have here this hardware set on my desk. I have a TwinCut 3 IPC from Beckhoff and some I.O. terminals uh, connected over Ethercat. And I have a um, process uh, data calibration device here as a source device to generate here some voltage into the measurement terminal. <coughs> We will work here today with the EL3751 because this terminal has a lot of features and so we can show everything that we want to show here in this webinar. This is the agenda. We will create a new Twinkle 3 project, make then the I.O. configuration, uh, write some small PLC and uh, integrated HMI. Please do not <laughs> think this is the big HMI, the HTML5 based uh, visualization. This is the small PLC HMI integrated in TwinCut 3. And then we will focus on the setup of the analog terminal, sampling rate, trigger mode, PDO selection and the parametrization over COE. In the end we will then see something about diagnosis and we will look on the data in the scope view. So, uh, our first goal here is now to create a O configuration. We will have this in the system and uh, when we have it running, we will then see hopefully on this side here the IO tree of the terminals. We will, uh, you should uh, pay attention here on the current that it not goes below zero so that all terminals have enough power. And then when the system is running, we have on the first point, we have the 100 frames per second here in the free run mode, um, which is a good sign. So the system is running here and all devices are here in the op state. What means op state? <coughs> Every EtherCAD slave has a state. It begins in the init when you switch on the, the slave and then it goes into pre-operational, safe operational and into operational, which is the normal state of all yeah, slaves which are running in the system. Yeah, and this we will see now in live in the system. I make a right click and I make a scan. Yes, I will find all devices here in my tree. I select the X102, which is my Ethernet port here on the system. And then we will find here all devices. We say yes, activate free run. That means that now the TwinCut system here on my IPC is in an idle mode. So the, the real time is not real running, but we have here field bus communication. All terminals are, are uh, working here. You see it here in the data. We have 500 frames per second running and all terminals are in op state. Only this analog terminals waits until it goes into the real time run mode because it needs distributed clock and so it waits here in the config mode in safe mode. So now we see the system is running and all terminals bring data. We will have a look into here, into this device in this terminal and see that here a lot of data are changing and especially the analog value here is coming in. Okay, so the system is running and all terminals bring here data. Now in the next step, we will connect this terminal with the integrated PLC. The PLC in TwinCAD is used for all computing and analyzing and data exchange, whatever you want to write and to code here into this programming um, system. 
Visual Studio and now we will write here this small program just to transform this integer value into the right real data. So we add here a new um, PLC project by right click here onto the PLC folder. So now it's created and we go here to the first program uh, block. This is the main program here and now we can here write some code. So on the first point we have of course the, the input here. I give him some name uh, value. Um, it is uh, a variable which should be linked. So I write at percent i star and it must be uh, of the size of double int because double int is the same as here in the, in the, of the, um, the value itself of the terminal which I want to read. So, and then I want to see it in a, uh, in a, <coughs> in a real value. So I, I define it here, I give him some name, uh, and this is of the type of real. And now I have to calculate it with copy and paste. I, I write it here and so I can calculate now uh, control copy, control paste uh, and I have to calculate it with 7, 8, 12, 500 uh, and I have to multiply it with 10 because in my setup here I want to measure 10 volt now. This is that what I give out from my process calibrator and what I have uh, selected in the analog terminal and uh, this number I will explain later. Okay, then I will now make a build, but I have one thing missed. There is uh, a message that he needs some sync master. That's very important. What means that you have here the hardware tree and you have here the software tree and you need a link between this both um, that the data are exchanged. So we have to link the variables that should be exchanged. And so we will do that. We click here on the, on the terminal especially here on the value and I make a double click and then it opens the window here to link the variable which comes out here from the main program I select it and then we see on this small arrow here that the variable is linked and the X also says you that there is a link. Okay, I will store it. I make a build. So everything is fine, no errors. Then I can activate this so that means that now everything is written down to the system. Yes, there is a warning because of virtual machines, no important. And then he says, okay, should I start my system in the twinkled run mode? That means that is the, the other mode, the real time mode. Now my IPC is a real time machine. When you see it down here, this is now a green icon. And now the real time machine of twinkled on this IPC is running in real time. Yeah, <laughs> but we have, we have to log in our PLC project. So we, I, I take this green arrow. Yes, I will log in it into the system. Now it's everything downloaded and with play F5, we can start the machine. So, and now we see here that the, the integer value that comes out from the terminal is calculated into 2.5 volt. That is just the voltage that I at the moment give out here into the terminal with my process calibrator. So, what means now this special number here? 7812500. 7812500 uh, a special number which is um, needed to calculate the integer number in the 10 volt area. So it is uh, defined for 24 bit channels in the extended range mode. Uh, because this is the definition. So 7812500 is the defined value for 10 volt in that mode. That is other than in the uh, legacy range mode because there is it 8388607 or in hexadecimal 7FFFFF. In the 16-bit channels, there of course are lower numbers. So we have the <laughs> 32767 for the 10 volt area in 16-bit with the legacy range mode. And we have in the extended range mode the 3518 as yeah, the defined number for 10 volt. 
So this is uh, the reason why we need here in TwinCut the, the other value to calculate this uh, yeah, integer value from, from the terminal into the real uh, floating point value here in TwinCut 2. So a very simple PLC, but now in the next step we want to have some small visualization to show this value in a very good way. And so in the next task we will um, use here this, the integrated PLC HMI, which is not the big web-based HMI from Beckhoff. Here this is integrated and good for yeah, starting up with some uh, operations when you have a uh, start with your machine, for example. So let's insert here this visualization. Uh, first, we have to log out our system. So now I will go here to Visus and add uh, additional visualization. <coughs> so it will be inserted now here in this Twinkert Pre project and we have yeah, one empty page. Of course you can make much more pages here but let's do here a very simple visualization. Uh, in the toolbox on the red side we will maybe have some label here on the, on the point and I will write here el 75 owned um, Voltage measurement. So this is now the header for this yeah, view. In the next point, I will add some meter here from this side. Um, now I have to configure it. Uh, on the first side, the arrow should be, uh, yeah, let's take here a red one. And uh, the scale I should be change, um, a subscale can be 1, a main scale maybe is 2 and the end should be of course 10 because we want to measure 10 volts. And then we need some label. Here for example this is the voltage control. Okay, but now I have to say which value should be measured and I will do this here in the, in the value area. Double click and then this button comes up. I can now browse into the PLC system and I select there the real variable. Yeah, and then everything should be clear. <coughs> I will log in here my system with online change and now you see here online this 2.5 volt which I at the moment give here into the terminal. Um, let's just add an additional device and let's say a text field because I want to read this value very clearly. So we will find here the text itself. Let's write um, uh, this one. So this is the normal printf notation. <coughs> And to say him which value should be read, then of course I have to give him the text variable. And also here I have select to select here this real value over this, this button here on the right side. Yeah, and you see it here. Now let's check in. And now we see here 2.5 exactly volt, which are measured here by the terminal. I will switch down now in my process generator to a dynamic voltage, and you see here now. Yeah, that the voltage is changing. I have uh, activated here a sinus um, 4 volt um, with 0 0.3 hertz and that you see now here in this yeah, small visualization. I switch it back to 2.5 volt. Okay, so now we have some small PLC and some small HMI and now in next step we will now check how to configure an analog input of Beckhoff. So there are four things to think about. The sampling rate, PDO selection, trigger mode and COE. The sampling rate uh, depends on the task cycle time that you use in your system to um, link to the terminal. So the same cycle time that you use in the, in the, in the task is the same um, sampling rate that you trigger the analog input. In the most terminals, some terminals are uh, slower, for example temperature measurement terminals and other terminals are faster, for example oversampling terminals. 
here in this um, in this screenshot you see that the, the task is here running with 100 microseconds cycle time and so also the analog inputs will be read out with 100 microseconds. Um, in oversampling terminals they read much more faster than the cycle time is and so we come to the next step to the process data selection. An EtherCAD device can offer different process data um, that you can select for use in your application and we can see that in live here also in the terminal I will click here on the terminal and you see here the top process data <coughs> and then you can see that here some different process data can be selected that this terminal is over and then here the data are changed so for example in this terminal in the waking terminal it's possible to switch over the terminal from integer um, presentation to a real um, uh, floating point presentation directly in the module itself. And also what can be selected here in the process data is the oversampling mode. So if you need more or less oversampling inside of an EtherCAD terminal. Yeah, the next point to um, think about is here the trigger mode. There are three trigger, trigger modes in an EtherCAD slave. The first one is free run, that means that the module runs itself, there is no external trigger. This model mode is used in slow temperature terminals, for example. You can run it faster by EtherCAD, you can ask it more often, give me your value, but the analog sampling itself is, is done in its own speed. You cannot influence it. The second way is the sync manager mode, the sync manager synchrone mode or SM synchrone. That means that every time when an EtherCAD frame goes through the terminal, through the EtherCAD slaves, it triggers the analog sampling in the devices. Um, so it is a frame triggered mode and therefore um, it is yeah, based also on the jitter of the EtherCAD frame. And therefore, the best quality trigger mode is distributed clock here, this third one, because in the distributed clock mode, the analog triggering is done by the internal clock, um, synchronized better than 100 nanoseconds um, in the distributed clock system between all slaves. And so you have the best analog trigger what in, in, in relation to the timing quality. And here in the screenshots, you see, for example, that the EL3751 uh, supports the DC mode, DC synchrone, and this, the frame triggered sync manager synchrone mode, while the EL3102 also supports the free run mode. Okay, and in the last step, we will have a view here into the parametrization of an analog input because there are a lot of uh, parameters to set when you maybe wish to have another setting than the um, default setting by Beckhoff. And we can see this also here in live. We go here into the COE online. It's now uploaded and we see here a long list of parameters, but the most are for the application not so interesting. Here are the important things, device name, hardware and firmware. And then we have in the 8000 area, we have the settings of the channels. So in this case, for example, this terminal is set to yeah, the voltage 10 volt control, for example. Or you can select here another filter mode, for example, a low pass or a high pass, whatever you want to do. <laughs> okay, so, but when you change here something, it's um, yeah, stored in the terminal. And when you exchange the terminal in some years, then the information is lost. So when you change here something, you always should add here your setting manually, right click by insert. And for example, in this case, say him, I have selected my interface to 10 volt. And now every time when the EtherCAD is starting up, this 10 volt setting is downloaded to this EtherCAD slave. And so also when you exchange the terminal later with a fresh one from Beckhoff in the default state, 
then these settings are downloaded to the, term, to the terminal and it will start in this desired state that you have tested with the terminal. So this is the manual way to work here with the uh, COE parameters, with the process data and with the distributed clock trigger mode settings. There is a new way to use this settings tab. Um, you can enable it here and then all these settings can be uh, done for its own here by, the, by this settings tab, for example the interface and the process data selection, oversampling modes, trigger modes, um, yeah, and the COE tabs. <coughs> can all done here by, the device, by this settings tab itself, which is available on some of the yeah, analog input devices. Okay, so now we have seen these four yeah, uh, feature sets that you have to think about when you want to use an, an EtherCAT device as an analog input. I will restart here my system because of the, the playing here. <coughs> So we have here everything running again and now I have set up my device and we have a speed about the startup list and we have talking about the settings mode. In the next point now we will uh, have a few on the diagnosis. Um, we see here four levels of diagnosis um, that you have to think about when you make your application. On the lowest point here it is the <clears throat> the, the diagnosis of the, the, the channel itself, of the analog channel, so is the channel working correctly. The next level is the slave, so is the slave working properly on Ethercat as, as FeedBus. And then in the, in the third level you have the master information, so is the master controlling all your Ethercat slaves in a correct way. And then the highest level of course is the application error. And we will also find these uh, linkable variables here, especially in this terminal. So we have some variables that gives the general device information. It is in op state, input toggles, uh, which is good, and the working counter is zero. This is also good. So I will now um, uh, separate the, the, the link, the Ethercat link. I draw out the cable here from the, from the coupler. And then you see that now the values are frozen nothing is changing anymore and the working counter goes to one so there is no data um, transfer anymore the toggle is not toggling anymore and the state is not eight so this terminal is not present anymore you can you cannot work with the data i will now check uh, the ethercat link and i re uh, plug the the cable inside and now you see ethercat will be restarted by TwinCut, it goes into OP, the toggles is toggling again, working counter is uh, zero again, and my, the values are coming again, the TXPDO state is zero, so everything is fine now. These are the variables you have to yeah, think when, and to link in your PLC and to program some diagnosis that you can really rely in your analog values um, and uh, work here with this EtherCAD based measurement devices. So, and now in the last step we will have a few on the scope, on the TwinCut scope. This is free integrated in TwinCut. Uh, we will uh, install here now a new measurement project and then have in the end such a small scope visualization. So let's do that now. I will make this smaller here. So, I will add here now on the right side a new project and so I will select now here a TwinCut project, uh, YT uh, over time, so Y-axis over time project. Okay, now here it's in integrated and we find here a simple chart. Um, I will now add uh, the, the real value that we know. Um, from before, so I open the target browser by right click and then I can browse here into my local uh, system main and I select here the real variable on my local system and then here the axis is 
yeah. is integrated. I do the target browser here. So we find here now the axis. Um, let's change here something on the axis. So I will not have an uh, auto scale. I will have a 10 volt axis and it shows down to zero. And uh, in the, in the, in the uh, axis itself, I can uh, let here the color. And in the chart itself, um, I will change here the, the record time here to um, two seconds, for example. Okay, I have now here some new buttons for the measurement and the scope. I will um, yeah, store it and then start here the record. And then you see here in this window, this 2.5 volt running and the, as the red line. And I will change now in my device to, an, to this dynamic signal. And then you find here a nice sinus, a very slow sinus in, in the system here running up and down. Yeah, now I want to have some overview. I will show you now some, some features of the system. For example, we have here the overview mode. Um, I have now activated. So I have here the full record, which is recorded, but I can in my view have here some stop. And now I can work here with the data and move it. And for example, I can zoom it so, and I can really go deep into the data until I find here the, the single marks again. Yeah? And you see when I click on it, then this, this data measurement points are um, yeah, shown uh, with, its, with its numbers. Yeah, so basically this was the, the presentation. This was the webinar. We can now make it a little bit more beautiful. So different um, pictures and windows here to have it open. This is what I generally want to show you, that in this 30 minutes it's possible to have here a complete configuration and parametrization of such a terminal running. Um, the scope is free integrated here in Twinkert only the long time recording um, needs and license. Yeah, so this is what I want to show you. Uh, when you need further information, of course, you can go to the back of information system, which is online in the internet, or you download an offline setup installation. And then, um, yeah, at the moment we have no questions. So thanks you for your attention and maybe we'll listen us in the next webinars. Thank you.